Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Quinnipiac University School of Nursing Accelerated Pinning Ceremony for the Class of 2020. My name is Lisa O'Connor, Dean in the School of Nursing. It continues to be my privilege to be the Dean for this nursing community with such amazing students, faculty, and staff. As you know, the pinning ceremony is a special tradition to mark our students' achievement of their nursing degree. Tonight, we have a special virtual ceremony planned. We have a fabulous keynote speaker, the history of the pin by one of your beloved faculty, and the presentation of awards, and of course the pin, to you by the director of this program. But first, we have a special guest who has been extremely supportive of our program, of our school, and of our initiatives, and is, who is eager to welcome you and address this class, the class of 2020. It is my honor to introduce to you Dr. Judy Olian, president of Quinnipiac University. Thanks so very much, Lisa. And I am truly honored to join you for this storied tradition of the nurses pinning ceremony. This year, the 20th year of the accelerated nursing program, more than ever, I, on behalf of frankly, everybody in the community and in the population at large, I want to express my utter gratitude and admiration to all our nurses, as you and your colleagues around the world put other lives ahead of your own as you care for people with your talent, your expert knowledge, your selflessness, your kindness. You, you are truly doing God's work. To all of our graduates serving in the healthcare field, this comes at an unprecedented time, one that demands your resilience, your stamina, and your compassion. But while these times are challenging, I personally, and I know I speak for others, am comforted to know that each of you will help ease this healthcare crisis. You're so well prepared for the challenges ahead, knowledgeable in the practice of nursing and caring in ministering to others who need you. And you are particularly resilient and courageous. This year, you're in the accelerated program, you're overachievers in that regard, and you've had to pivot away from some of the traditional clinical and lab training of the nursing program since March, confront the stresses of entering your vocation in the midst of unprecedented healthcare conditions. And you've done that with even greater commitment and passion. I wanna share a quick heartwarming story that shows just how special our QU nurses are. In the midst of this crisis, a number of Quinnipiac nursing alumni created a video from the front lines as they battled COVID-19 in hospitals across the nation. They took the time in the midst of the havoc that surrounded them to send their professors a video with a simple message to thank their professors who they said in the video had prepared them so well, even for the magnitude of the crisis that they were encountering. They were very grateful for the academic rigor and personal support they received from their QU professors. So as much as they thanked our professors, we are in awe of these nurses, of all of our Bobcat nurses. One of our nursing alumni in that video, Kimberly Radwanski from the class of 2016, who's now at Baylor Medical Center in Dallas, said something that really struck me. She said, you taught me that nursing is an artwork, how to use caring effectively, how to hold a hand and the power of it, and the difference between sympathy and empathy. You taught me to be a nurse using integrity, scholarship, and service. These are really touching words that capture the power of the vocation of being a nurse, how to touch another, often at the most vulnerable time in a person's and family's life. You've chosen one of the most noble, truly life-saving professions, a career of sacrificing for others, extending compassion, connecting with the humanity of another, listening to others' fears and dreams. It can be intimidating and exhausting, and at the same time, it can be an exhilarating vocation. You now join our School of Nursing graduates who are spread out across the world, leading hospitals or at nearby regional medical centers, or who are providing vital healthcare support to rural communities. Regardless of where your journey takes you, you are always responding to someone in need. During nurses, National Nurses Day this past May, I came across a post online that read, nurse, 
just another way to describe a person strong enough to tolerate anything and soft enough to understand anyone. And that's truly the uniqueness of your chosen profession. It isn't the paycheck that drives you or the hours or the adulation. It is the purpose. It's knowing that you did all you could, all that's in your power to make another person's life better. Your profession demands selflessness. Our nurses and frontline healthcare workers are sacrificing like never before, pulling multiple 24 hour shifts, exposing themselves to a potentially dangerous virus, being with patients as they struggle for oxygen, serving as family to patients who are barred from seeing their blood relatives, spending precious time away from their own families due to long hours at work or their own desire and need to quarantine to keep their families safe. We've heard the word heroes used often in recent months to describe our nurses, but the reality is they have always been supermen or superwomen to those whose lives they touch well before the pandemic. The RN workforce is expected to grow to 3.4 million in 2026, an increment of 15% since 2016. Each year, the US needs an additional 200,000 nurses to fill new positions and to replace retiring nurses. As the numbers indicate, we really need you. You are vital in primary care offices, in clinics, hospitals, schools, in corporations, in operating rooms, at day camps, assisting in a heart transplant, or patching up a skin knee. We need you in all of those places. During your time at Quinnipiac, you've done more than earn your degree. You've made lifelong friends. You've discovered new aspects in the world around you and probably new dimensions within yourself. You're surrounded by a diversity of backgrounds, experiences, worldviews, interests, and you've been enriched because of that diversity. While today's pinning ceremony is being done in living rooms around the country with your loved ones, instead of on campus celebrating with your families and your fellow nurses and faculty, please know that your accomplishments and achievements are absolutely awesome and that we are cheering from you for more than you will ever know. The tradition and history of the nurses pinning ceremony dates back to the Crusades of the 12th century, the Knights of the Order of the Hospital of St. John the Baptist cared for those injured in the Crusades. When new monks were initiated, they took a solemn vow to care for the ill and injured and were given a Maltese cross as a sign of that commitment. Skip ahead several centuries to 1855 when Queen Victoria awarded Florence Nightingale the Red Cross of St. George for her heroic efforts in treating those harmed in the Crimean War. Florence, in turn, gave medals to the best of the new nursing graduates. And by the mid 1880s, some universities and nursing schools around the world were pinning new nurses. A tradition was born. Of course, nursing graduates around the world are experiencing a unique pinning ceremony in 2020. From virtual ceremonies like ours today to drive up and drive through ceremonies taking place throughout the country. It is not how you are receiving your pin, it is why. Your why has never been more important. What's the why? I think the answer is that you are fulfilled by caring for the life and well being of others. That's a humbling answer to the rest of us. That's why you will keep going at 2.30 a.m. during a night shift, perhaps your third in a row. It will propel you to hold the hand of a crying baby or of a patient in excruciating pain. It will keep you going in your 10th hour in the OR and giving yet another vaccination to a newborn to protect her from the dangers of the world. I expect the why was what drove you to Quinnipiac to become a, a nurse and it will be with you always. We are all so proud of you, of your purpose, of your resoluteness, of your generosity of spirit. You've accomplished a great deal already during your time at Quinnipiac, and that'll be dwarfed by your impact as alumni and as practicing nurses in the years ahead. Congratulations to the class of 2020. Stay Bobcat strong. Stay healthy and stay in touch. Thank you. Thank you, President Olian.
it is now my opportunity to take a few minutes to let you all know a little bit about this class, these bright, hardworking students who are receiving their pins. There are 61 who will have successfully completed this program come mid-September. There's one graduate among us from the RN to BSN program from the class of 2020. You will all soon go into the workforce full-time as a nurse. But first, you've got to take that NCLEX nursing licensure exam. You've got this. Pause for a moment. Think about this past year, how much you've endured, how hard you have worked, and how determined and focused you have been. The collective work of this group, the perseverance and determination you have shown is truly incredible. As a group, you have thousands of hours collectively of class time, of lab time, lab experiences, clinical practice time, the hours of endless homework and preparation. It's all really immeasurable. But what does this all tell us? This educational preparation was critical for your success as a nurse. You are entering the profession, as you know, as a baccalaureate nurse at a critical time in our nation's history. This COVID pandemic will challenge you even more so than your nursing school experience, but you will be ready. You'll be challenged to prioritize, make quick decisions, multitask, and utilize your clinical reasoning skills. Be adaptable, be flexible, patient and kind. Although at times it may have been difficult, know that you are so well prepared to face these challenges. Quinnipiac has prepared you for a variety of healthcare settings where you are certain to excel. You have put your heart and soul into this work. It has paid off. It will continue to pay off. I promise you will love the career you have chosen. You will make a difference in every life you touch going forward. It will be such a good feeling when you are practicing as a registered nurse and you come upon a situ situation where you say, I remember that from nursing school, or I remember I had a patient with that health situation, and you'll know how to respond. You'll know what to do because of your educational preparation. You are a very special group of students. And yes, on some days, like any family, you, we, we've all had our moments together, shall I say. I think that this faculty, staff, and student relationship we have here is very unique. It is cherished, and it is a bittersweet time for all of us. Tonight is your ceremonial pinning. Be proud, stand tall, and celebrate. It is your time to shine. Your commencement is soon approaching. Commencement means beginning, a new beginning, a start. So go forth, class of 2020. You have the tools now, the foundation and determination to start anew. It is now my honor and pleasure to introduce to you my colleague, Associate Dean and Professor for the Quinnipiac School of Nursing, Dr. Lisa Rafeshi. Thank you very much, Lisa. It is my honor to introduce Ina Williams, our esteemed guest speaker for this evening's pinning ceremony. First, our sincerest thank you, Ina, for your participation in this milestone event for our graduating accelerated nursing class of 2020. Since 2018, Ina Williams has been serving as the chief nursing officer at Yale New Haven Hospital, a 1,541 bed magnet designated academic medical center. Her career at Yale New Haven Hospital spans back to 1992 when she joined the organization as a staff nurse in perioperative services. Since that time, she's held various leadership positions in the areas of nursing practice, education, and management. Back in 2012, she was promoted to vice president and associate chief nursing officer for the St. Raphael campus and played an instrumental role leading the integration of nursing following the acquisition of St. Raphael Hospital by Yale New Haven Hospital. Ina has been part of the senior leadership team that led the hospital to two successful magnet designations from the American Nurses Credentialing Center. In her current role as chief nursing officer, she's responsible to all major inpatient and outpatient clinical services with distinct emphasis on safety and quality, strategic planning, human resources, and the patient experience. As a member of the senior executive team at Yale, she's also responsible for strategy and business development. 
Ina's experiences within the professional nursing community are noteworthy, and I'd like to take a moment to highlight just a few. She has been actively engaged with both the National and Southern Connecticut chapter of the Black Nurses Association and has been particularly focused on mentoring the next generation of nursing professionals. She's a member of several boards, including the Board of Trustees at the Connecticut Hospital Association and Gateway Community College. In recognition of her professional contributions, Ina has been the recipient of a number of local and national awards over the course of her career. Ina graduated with a diploma in nursing from the University Hospital of the West Indies. Since then, she's earned a bachelor's degree in health studies, a bachelor's degree in nursing, and a master of science degree in management in business administration. Her current PhD studies are in the area of leadership and organizational change. Please join me in warmly welcoming Ina Williams to tonight's pinning ceremony. Ina? Thank you, Lisa, um, very much. <clears throat> uh, sometimes when I listen to people read about me, I, uh, I used to think of uh, individuals when I would sit in an audience and I would hear somebody read their bio and I would be like, one day I want to grow up to be just like that. I think I've grown up just a little bit, I think. <laughs> um, so thank you very much. I am so thrilled to be here with you all today. Um, and Lisa and I are you know, very good friends. We've actually been friends for quite some time. And thank you for that invitation. I never pass up an opportunity to have a conversation with new nurses. Because um, I, I remember the time when I was also a new nurse. And I, I have tried over my entire career never to forget that. Well, let me start out by just uh, recognizing uh, President Olian. I think, I hope I said that correctly. Um, Dean O'Connor, um, Associate Dean Lisa, uh, all the faculty, the graduates, friends and family, and anyone I may have missed along the way. All your supporting cast. The pinning ceremony is an important one in the life of a nurse. I think it symbolizes a sort of transition from one stage of your journey to nursing to another. And it, it is only the beginning of many transitions along your nursing professional journey. Now, I know that all of you have transitions in your life already. You grew up from being a baby to an adolescent, to a teenager, and then to an adult. And so here you are. I think you're all adults. You better be or else you can't become a nurse yet. Uh, other transitions include preschool to elementary, to high school, to college. Some of you have transitioned from um, living at home to living on your own or with friends or partner or spouse or furry friends. So transitions are not new and are in fact a normal part of the journey of life. And so I really wanna focus my, my conversation with you today around your next transition as you transition into the profession of nursing. Now, I know you're not quite there yet. You have a few more months to go, but I think you're close enough that uh, this will make sense to you. So what's the point here? Um, I, I wanna focus the, 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 the next couple of minutes on three, and I'm gonna use uh, the themes of songs to kind of have this conversation with you. And I want, I want this to be a conversation uh, with both of us. So the first one is, what does not kill you make you stronger? And I think you've heard the president, your dean, Lisa, has already talked about the challenges that you have faced. And I think that you all have such an incredible story to share as a nurse. There is, there, I don't think there's a better year to have become a nurse. As challenging as it has been, what you have been able to overcome and persevere through has probably accelerated you, your life in ways that would have taken you many, many years. I have spoken to so many of our new nurses as I have rounded, and what they tell me on a daily basis is, what I thought was gonna take me six months took me three days, because we found ourselves in a situation that was unprecedented, unfamiliar, um, lack of knowledge, uh, and we were all in it together. And so we had to truly depend on each other 
in order to make that work. And so they have learned things about themselves. They have learned things about the profession of nursing. They have learned how to make quick decisions. They have learned how to recover, to stay resilient. And, and I'm sure that you have had some of those same experiences. You have had to flex, you've had to adjust, you've had to go from being in classrooms to being on virtual classrooms, learning your clinicals in very different ways. But out of that has come creativity in a way that I have not seen in a long time in my career. So what can you, what should you, what should you learn through this experience? You can take away from this experience that you have been prepared by your faculty, you have been prepared by your family and friends to take on challenges that you probably were not, you didn't think you, you could possibly do. And you have probably found parts of yourself and discovered parts of yourself that you didn't even know you had. So let me recognize that. Let me congratulate you on the many transitions you've had to take during this COVID pandemic. You've had to flex, you've, rapid, you've had to rapidly adjust to new norms, expectation, new ways of learning, and I could go on and on. But the fact here is that you are at a stage of transition in your nursing career that suggests to me that what you have, you have the exception and the strength and the courage in order to do so much more than you probably thought you were able to do. And so what does not kill you, make you stronger. You've overcome many obstacles. You've made, you have remained resilient and focused. While some of these experiences were and are still overwhelming, you rose to the occasion and you should be very, very proud of your accomplishments to date. It takes a really, you know, they say that um, hardship either brings out the best in you or brings out the worst in you. And so for you to have made it to today suggests to me that you had to dig deep and that you found parts of you that you didn't know existed, but it didn't kill you. It made you stronger. The second point I'd like to make is I want to encourage you to wade in the water. I don't know if you know that song, but there's a song that says, wade in the water, wade in the water, children. God's going to trouble the water. Welcome to the most trusted profession. And so I invite you to wade into the water of nursing. After 18 years, nursing is still rated as the most trusted profession, consistently every single year. So I encourage you to transition from a student when you get there to wading in the waters of this noble, noble profession. This year has been declared as a year of the nurse and midwife. What a special and exciting time for you to enter the profession of nursing. It is a time of great creativity, innovation, and excellence. As you wade in the water of the nursing profession, there will be practice waves that you will have to navigate. Sometimes you will feel as if the waves are about to overtake you, but don't let the waters overcome you. Know that there are individuals who are available to assist you, just like your faculty have supported you and mentored you through this journey. Know that there are many folks continually in the nursing profession that will hold your hand, that will teach you how to swim, that will make sure you have all the tools that you need to be successful so that the waves will not overcome you. Stay connected to others who may be in the same level of practice. Don't be afraid to lose this network of colleagues that you have. Uh, it will be important that you stay connected to them. And then when you find yourself in a new place, build new friendships and build new relationships. The early beginnings of your career will feel like you're wading in unknown waters. And for those of us who've been in it almost 40 years, it still feels like unknown waters. So don't be worried. It, it, it's, it's not unusual. But you have been prepared with the foundational skills and the knowledge you need to get you started. I can still rec recall how scared I was in my first couple of months or even years. I, I, I would go home asking myself, did I give that last medication? Did I do everything I needed to do? Did I remember, did I do the dressing? Did I do it right? Is it okay? Will that patient be there when I come back tomorrow because I did something awful that might have killed them? 
that was my biggest fear that I was going to kill somebody every time I went to work because I was going to do something really, really, really bad. But I didn't um, because there were so many others there to support me. And you have come into the nursing career at such a wonderful time. You've got electronic medical records that give you all the information you need that you need to complete. Back in the days, we had to remember how to write it all down in scripted format and long story formats. But you're entering a time when there are so many tools and we've gotten smarter as a nursing community. We've gotten more intelligent as a nursing practice community. And we understand that the more that we can re-engineer the practice of nursing to provide protection and safety for practitioners, that's what we spend our time doing. We've moved from a culture of blame to a culture of just, a just culture that says, why did that mistake occur? And what are the systems that allow the practitioner to fail? Rather than say, like we did in the old days, you are a bad nurse and you did something really bad. And we now provide and make sure that when something terrible happens, that we don't just leave you alone, but that we provide you with the kind of support that will get you through uh, those times. And be prepared, they will happen, but what does not kill you will make you stronger. Many hospitals now have structures in place to engage nurses in professional practice and allow them uh, the autonomy that they need in order to practice and drive the practice of nursing. At Yale Naval Hospital, our nursing professional governance, about 230 strong, are totally responsible for shaping the practice. When somebody emails me and says, Ina, would you like to approve this policy or practice? My first question is, has the Professional Practice Governance Council approved it? They are at the sharp end of care. They know what practice looks like and feels like, and it is our responsibility to continue to trust you to, to guide us to make the right decision. So that's not my decision to make. It's my responsibility to support, but it is I trust their decision to guide us in the, in the practice. So wade into the water of inquiry and curiosity. Keep learning, remain open for opportunities that may come your way. I know that perhaps the last thing on your mind right now is, you know, sort of what's my next job and what are uh, my professional goals, but I know some of you have already thought about that. And so my advice to you is keep your plan, but remain open for the unusual opportunities that may come your way. I think my first job, my first two jobs were jobs that I said I wanted. Everything after that were things that people asked me to do that I thought, well, that was not on my radar screen, but it sounds interesting. I'll go give it a shot. And it leads to another uh, opportunity and another opportunity. So don't be afraid to wade in the water of uncertainty. Raise your hand and volunteer for something that makes you absolutely uncomfortable. Something that you may not know anything about. It has worked for many other folks uh, on this uh, Zoom uh, um, pinning ceremony today. And I guarantee you it will work for you. It's, it will be okay. And then finally, as you transition into this amazing profession, go make the world a better place, because really that's what this is all about. You became a nurse because you want to touch somebody's life, because you want to make the world a better place. And if that's not the reason why you became a nurse, then I suggest that you have made the wrong choice. Make the world a better place by never missing an opportunity to connect with your patients and the people in your community. We are holistic individuals, and we don't just live in a world of nursing. We live in a world of we're multiple roles. We're spouses, we're mothers, we're teachers, we're guardians, we're community advocates. We have all these different wonderful opportunities to create um, uh, improvement and betterness. And that's, I'm making that word up, betterness in the world. You now have an incredible responsibility to speak up when you see something that's not right. The former Congressman John Lewis reminded us often that when we see something that is not right, not just, not fair, you have a moral obligation to do something. Patients depend on us to do something. Patients depend on us 
that when we see something that is not right, not just and not fair to do something, we are their voices. No time has it been more evident than during this pandemic. I know, I've always known we've had a wonderful group of professional nurses at Yale River Hospital, but I have watched every single one of them stepped up and have done incredible, innovative, and amazing things beyond their wildest dreams. They have stood in place of families who could not be there because they couldn't. I, they have been the voice of patients who needed to communicate messages to their families because they couldn't be at the bedside. They have been the intuition to their patients when they sense something. I, I can remember a particular story of a nurse who worked in pediatrics and became a part of the CMO, uh, the, the unit where we moved our patients who were gonna pass away. She had an intuition. She walked into a patient's room. She felt that she needed to play this particular song. And as she turned this on and played that song, he, he reached out, grabbed her hand and went to sleep. She, she talked about that moment as if it was a painful moment. And as we, 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 we discussed it, it became clear to her that she was his angel at that particular moment, not just his nurse, but really the part of his soul that helps him to transition to a new world. I saw nurses asking questions until the right diagnosis was made, challenging a plan of care or medication order, and our nurses do this on a regular basis, but they do this in order to ensure the safety of our patients or even a colleague sometimes asking that questioning attitude to make sure that their colleague does not get in trouble. I saw nurses truly living every day the definition of the nurse, which is to assist the individual sick or well in the performance of those activities contributing to health or its recovery or to a peaceful death that he would perform or she unaided if he or she had the necessary strength, will or courage. So look out for your colleague and never treat anyone as if they're less than. It doesn't matter what their role, it doesn't matter what their responsibility and assignment. Every individual is unique and if we pause long enough to connect, we, can, we discover incredible things about who they are and what they bring to the table. If and when you have the chance, create more open doors, make room at the table for others. As a nurse, you have an incredible opportunity to transition others such as your patients into many stages of life or death. Transition your colleagues into better human beings and create a better world than the one you found. And so as I close, I congratulate every one of you. I welcome you into the most noble and trusted profession. 40 years, I would do it all over again. And remember, what does not kill you, make you stronger, don't be afraid to wade into the waters of nursing and go make the world a better place. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ina. It was um, wonderful. Um, thank you for being here today and for those very grounding and inspiring words. Truly betterness from the heart. Very nice, thank you. And congratulations to you, class on almost arriving to the end of this first leg in your journey into nursing. I am honored to be here today to present the John Gaddis Humanitarian Award on behalf of John's parents, Allison Lane Redeker and Jean Gaddis. John was an accelerated student from the class of 2015 and at the time, I was the director of the Accelerated Program. I came to know John long before he entered the program, in fact, at least two years long, um, by answering questions periodically via email. He was articulate, funny, and engaging, but he also was a discerning shopper as he explored every detail of the program. And when I finally thought that he had chosen another program, his application arrived on my desk. Trust me when I tell you, 
John was no angel. He was a rascal in his own right. But there was also something very special about him. Sadly, John took his own life in 2017. It was his parents, whom I also came to know through John, who understood how much John cherished his time at QU and how it brought him closer to a life he loved, giving to and helping others. In his memory, and by his parents' generous contributions, the John Gaddis Humanitarian Award was created. John Bailey Gaddis graduated from the, Quin from the Quinnipiac University Accelerated Program in 2015. His ability to build community was a grounding force for his class, pulling peers, faculty, and staff together in ways that will not soon be forgotten. John, as he preferred to be called, value the diversity of his classmates' backgrounds and is remembered for the sense of belonging he instilled in those he met. Building relationships with peers, other members of the School of Nursing community, and people from other disciplines was important to him. He was quick to organize a volleyball game or a potluck supper or a study session. John had a kind heart, a slightly wicked sense of humor, and respect for the ideas and values of others. He was an inspiration in many ways. Understanding that we must nourish our souls, he found time to enjoy nature, the arts, exercise, family, friends, and solitude, and he helped others to do the same. He recognized that the journey is even more important than the dream that is the journey's goal. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said that life's most persistent and urgent question is, what are you doing for others? The answer John lived is clearly seen in his penchant for promoting the common good as he quietly led the class toward the goals of excellence and wholeness. It is my great honor and on behalf of the Gaddis family to present this award to Kara Kenyon. Congratulations, Kara. Nice. Before introducing you to Dr. Mary Peterson, Director of the Accelerated Program, I encourage you to view a video message from John's mom, Allison Lane Redeker, on our QU Today webpage on Monday. Mary? Thank you, Corey, and congratulations, Kara, on receiving that award. To continue on with further Accelerated Nursing Student Awards for 2020, I'd like to announce the first award recipient for the Connecticut League for Nursing Peer Recognition Award. This award was actually um, awarded last October to an outstanding student that was recognized by his peers and was selected by his or her peers. This year's recipient for the Connecticut League for Nursing Peer Recognition Award was Joseph D'Amico. Congratulations, Joe. The next award is the Truen Award for Academic Excellence. This award recognizes academic excellence and exceptional potential in the discipline of nursing. It is presented to the nursing student with the highest overall grade point average. The award is supported by the Benjamin and Juliet Truen Memorial Endowed Fund, which was established by the nursing pro for the nursing program by Estelle Truen Beecher in memory of her parents. This year, we have a four-way tie for the Truen Award. We have four students in the accelerated program with a perfect 4.0 GPA. This year's recipients are Kelsey Fortner, Emma Johnson, Haley Mislui, and Amanda Pohalis. Congratulations to all four of you. The next award is the Benjamin and Julianne Truen Award for Professional Leadership in Nursing. This award recognizes outstanding leadership and exceptional potential in the discipline of nursing. 
it is presented to the accelerated nursing student who has made significant contributions to the nursing program and the greater community of nursing. The award was supported by the Benjamin and Juliet Truen Memorial Endowed Fund, which was established for the nursing program by Estelle Beecher in memory of her parents. This year's recipient is Lillian Gopian. Congratulations, Lillian. And the last award for the accelerated students is the Holistic Nursing Practice Award. This award recognizes clinical excellence and exceptional potential in the discipline of nursing. It is presented to the accelerated nursing student who has demonstrated a strong commitment to the unity of body, mind, emotion, and spirit in the delivery of healthcare. This year's recipient is Michael Lepore. Congratulations, Michael. And to all of our award recipients this evening, I'm proud of all of you. Congratulations. It is now my pleasure to introduce to you the student speaker for this evening, Brianna Marshall. Welcome, Brianna. Thank you. Uh, thank you, President Olian, Dean O'Connor, Associate Dean Rabeshi, Assistant Dean Fisher, our keynote speaker, VP and CNO of Yale New Haven, Ina Williams, Dr. Boyd, our Director of Accelerated Nursing Program, Dr. Peterson, Dr. Herman, and Q staff, as well as our family and friends for celebrating with us today as we receive our nursing pins. It is an honor to speak to all of you today and quickly bring you through the Accelerated Nursing Class of 2020's journey. One short year ago, we were all strangers entering this program with an array of backgrounds, experiences, and degrees. We were all faced with this exciting yet daunting task of learning everything possible about nursing in one year. The undertaking seemed impossible, but as time passed, we saw noticeable changes in one another's knowledge and ability, realizing we were, in fact, building our nursing foundation week by week, even though there were moments we felt dazed and confused. Little did we know, halfway through our nursing transformation, we would experience unprecedented challenges caused by the rise of the coronavirus. Thankfully, our dedicated School of Nursing faculty put all their efforts into making the abrupt switch to online learning seamless and meaningful within the limitations of being virtual to keep our program on track. Transitioning exclusively to online classes and clinicals was challenging and unforeseen, but also emphasize our class's level of resilience, determination, and camaraderie. Quarantine ironically brought us closer as a cohort and the outpouring of support and encouragement for one another only grew stronger as we were all in this together. In transitioning to back to in-person labs and clinicals this semester, we were able to reconnect with our classmates, professors, and patients, which re-energized us for the last segment of our program. We appreciated how effective all those hours on Zoom for classes and virtual simulations really were, but also had to admit there were some real perks that in hindsight surprisingly made us miss Zoom, such as rolling out of bed at 7.58 for our 8 a.m. class and hiding behind the camera off option when we were anything but camera ready. We now stand in front of you as novice nurses who have overcome the challenges of nursing school and the unexpected events from COVID-19. We are set to move into the field with qualities fostered from this adversity that prepared us for our careers by testing our flexibility, patience, perseverance, diligence, and collaboration. We must also attribute our readiness to our wonderful, wonderful professors and staff who have offered their guidance and expertise each step of the way. Now, to my ABSN family, thank you for being the best group I could ever hope to experience this program and all of its exceptional circumstances. Congratulations and be proud of all you have accomplished. All of the patients you'll encounter are lucky to receive not only the quality holistic care that QU has instilled in our practice, but also your devotion and compassion. I wish all of you the best of luck as we prepare to tackle this next exciting yet daunting chapter of entering the workforce and building upon the foundation QU has provided us. In the words of Florence Nightingale, let us never consider ourselves finished nurses. We must be learning all of our lives. Always be your best and keep inspiring. Thank you. Thank you, Brianna, for your wonderful words to the accelerated class of 2020. 
My name is Eileen Herman. I'm the director of the Upper Division of Nursing. And it's both an honor and a pleasure to be here this evening for the accelerated class of 2020 pinning ceremony. I've gotten to personally know these students during the summer classes. I watched them grow with their nursing knowledge. They've demonstrated the art of nursing, showing caring, kindness, and compassion. These nursing students go beyond the expectation of a new graduate and their nursing ability, as noted by their resilience from traditional classes to virtual classes to hybrid and flex schedules. Okay, now the rest of this is gonna be a 30 minute presentation. I'm only joking. Um, you might be asking, why is this so important and why do we wanna talk about the pin? Well, it's one of the most exciting times in a nurse's career. The pin actually represents professional achievement. It identifies the source of a nurse I am sorry, um, I was talking and got so excited, I put myself on mute. But it's really important with the history because it tells somebody what nursing school you graduated from. It tells them the function that you'll be able to function as a nurse. Patients look at that and say, oh, I know where you're from. It's also known as the rite of passage to further detail President Olean's pinning history, the nursing pin is a thousand year old symbol of service to others. It started in the 12th century. The earliest badges were given to those who tended the sick and were presented to the Knights of the Order of the Hospital of St. John. During this ceremony, each knight took a Masonic vow to become the serf and slave of their lords and sick. They were presented with the Maltese cross, which was worn on the black habit draped over their armor. In 1860s, the tradition of the nursing pin and ceremonial pinning originated at the Nightingale School of Nursing at St. Thomas Hospital in London, having recently been awarded with the Red Cross of St. George for her selfless service to the injured and dying. In the Crimean War, Florence Nightingale chose to extend this honor to her most outstanding graduate nurses by presenting them with a medal for excellence. In 1880, Wolverton Royal Hospital School in England initiated the tradition of presenting it to all graduates. In the United States, the first pin was awarded to the graduating class in 1880 at Bellevue Hospital School of Nursing in New York City. This pin featured a crane in the center for vigilance, encircled with a band of blue for consistency and an outer band of red for mercy and relief of suffering. Interesting, these values are still important today in nursing. In 1916, the practice of pinning new grads was common in schools throughout the United Kingdom and North America. The pin embodies intention to stay with a patient long after everybody else leaves or gives up. A nurse is always there for patients, as seen today in the COVID-19 crisis. The pinning ceremony bears witness to endurance, dedication, desire, and commitment to the profession of nursing. The colors used in the pin have significance. The Quinnipiac nursing pin contains the color of blue, representing truth and loyalty and gold representing worthiness. These nursing students deserve the recognition for the truth in keeping with the professionalism of nursing, their loyal service to patients, families, communities, each other, and the worthiness is for their nursing degree that they have earned through this rigorous study in completing their nursing education. Each one of you deserves to be applauded for the dedication and accomplishment in nursing. I wish you all to have a wonderful future in nursing. It's the best profession ever.
I would now like to present Dr. Mary Peterson, Director of the Accelerated Nursing Program, who will present the Quinnipiac University School of Nursing pins to each of our graduates. Thank you. Hi again, it is my honor to present these pins to the Accelerated Class of 2020. We start with our first pin this evening with Jessica Abendola. Kimberly Acosta. Stephanie Alexandre. Elise Arsenal. Sierra Cameron. Anthony Carlucci. Emily Carrizo. Joseph D'Amico. Jonathan D'Amato. Allison Dodd. Margaret Donahue. Megan Finicario. Kelsey Fortner. Angela Fusco. Christina Galuzzo. Sarah Givens. Marissa Gomes. Lillian Gopian. Vanessa Hamilton. Vita Horash Cerrone. Emma Johnson. Kara Kenyon. Stephen Kaprosky. Jenny Cree. Anna Reed Kowachka. Edward Kai. Dawa Lama. Kirsten Lazor. Thomas Lee. Michael Lapore. Kathleen Long. Nicole Lawfrey. Morel Mara. Brianna Marshall. Michaela McTomney. Kayla Mellon. Megan McCutsky. Azana Musav. Haley Ms. Louie. Kevin Nguyen. Jessica Osorio Perez. Sarah Papp. Mishali Patel. Amber Padavina Arroyo. Lauren Pedanella. Amanda Pohalos. 
Samantha Prisco. Ismael Rivera. Peter Schultz. Anat Shore. Andy Thorne. Alyssa Tazi. Sandra Bugorski. Jacqueline Vitero. Megan Wetzelberger. Shayona Williams. McKenna Wilson. Haley Woodard. Jolene Woodard. Denise Yettle. Amy Zhao. Hi. Thank you all. And I would like to well wish a warm welcome, or a warm welcome, I'm sorry, a warm congratulations to the accelerated class of 2020. Thank you. So as we conclude this pinning ceremony this evening, it's my pleasure um, to be able to have the closing remarks. So again, I'd like to congratulate the accelerated class of 2020. And if you could all give them a big round of applause, it is quite a feat to complete this accelerated program. So as the director of the accelerated program, I have had the pleasure of welcoming this class a year ago, and I stand here today in amazement as to how fast this year has passed and how gracefully this class has faced the challenges of 2020. Unlike the current incoming class, you entered this program face, not knowing that you would be facing a pandemic in the middle of your nursing education. Being well aware of the challenges that today's nursing, nurses are facing as frontline workers, you have continued on with your goal of becoming one of those nurses. I am really so proud of all of you and the hard work and sacrifice that has gotten you to this point today. You will be soon leaving Quinnipiac. There are only a few weeks of clinical left and you will be launching into your nursing careers. You will always be a Quinnipiac nurse and you will always be part of the Quinnipiac community and the Bobcat family. For those of you that are unaware of why the Bobcat is the mascot for Quinnipiac, I want to give you a little insight onto that history. A legend has it that an Indian spirit was doomed to his internal sleep when a spell was cast over him, but his ferocious companion a stealthy giant bobcat with vibrant blue and fiery gold eyes, think back to the color of your pin, was spared such a fate. The Indian spirit now forms the peaks of Sleeping Giant Mountain next to Quinnipiac University and the devoted bobcat loyally defends him to this day. From time to time, the bobcat can be spotted around campus watching over our school. A few weeks back, I, was, I spotted a bobcat in my backyard. And as I researched them, because I was not sure if he was going to eat the cats or the dog, or somebody had to come and take him away, which they don't, by the way, you just report that you saw one. I, I did a little bit of research on the bobcat. And I came to the realization as if I was reading about the characteristics of a bobcat, that it is quite an appropriate mascot for accelerated nursing students in particular. The first thing I read was that bobcats are elusive, nocturnal, and rarely seen. And I thought of you all over this, you know, this past semester and how many hours you were probably hidden away in a room on Zoom 
or in a classroom, if you were fortunate enough, at Quinnipiac, and where, how your families thought you were, where were you um, during those elusive, nocturnal, and rarely seen moments. Next to Bob the Cat's coat is like a fingerprint. It's unique to the individual, and it can use, be used to identify them. And that reminded me of the uniqueness of each and every one of you and how that uniqueness is what enriches the accelerated nursing class. Everything that you bring from your backgrounds, your culture, um, your life experiences makes the accelerated nursing class very unique among any other program at Quinnipiac University. The Bobcats next, the Bobcat has an adaptability that allows them to occupy and be successful in various settings. You have adapted in class lectures, in labs, at site clinicals, in Zoom lectures, in Zoom labs, in virtual clinicals, in on-campus clinicals, and will be finishing back at at site clinicals. And among those clinicals, you had med surge clinical, you had PD clinical, OB clinical, and the list goes on. Yet you all adapted to each and every one of those experiences. Lastly, bobcats rarely vocalize, but they can produce very loud growls and snarls. So this is one characteristic that I have to say does set you apart. Yes, I have heard loud growls and snarls out of all of you at one point, and you've probably heard them out of me too. But throughout this program, you have shared your thoughts and your opinions, and you have learned therapeutic communication and the necessity of speaking up to prevent medical error and advocate for your patients. As you embark on your nursing career, always remember to be the voice for those who are unable to speak. You are all an asset to the nursing profession. As a nurse, you will provide competent, holistic, culturally sensitive care to your patients. And as a leader, you will share your wisdom, knowledge, and skills to help improve the healthcare system. I look forward to hearing about your future endeavors, and I believe that you will all be successful nurses and have exciting careers. I'm proud of all of you. So again, please join me in congratulating the Quinnipiac University School of Nursing Accelerated Class of 2020. Thank you. And I wish.